So this is our life now. Now that we're here, can you believe? Strange how these things turn out, but this is us now. Can you see me clear? Each day I try so hard. Each day we're getting closer to be where we need to be. Some days they are tough, yes. First of all, could I introduce Professor Linda Warren? Uh, Linda is the uh, AAA Life member and founder of the Australian Phaser Association. I guess were it not for her, uh, we may not have been here today. So we're very pleased to have you here today, Linda, as we are at all our functions. Simon uh, Warren, Linda's husband, uh, thank you very much for your attendance here today. Uh, I thought I may have seen you yes last night at the Broncos. Uh, <laughs> um, both very good supporters of the Broncos as well. Dr Chris Davis, MP, State Member for Stafford, Assistant Health Minister. Uh, we're very pleased to have you here today in your capacity and we thank you in anticipation of your few words later on today. Evan Moorhead, immediate past Member for the Electoral District of Waterford. Uh, Evan has been a great supporter of our association over the years and indeed I think back to uh, Wednesday Without Words in 2009-2011 where we supported two functions at uh, Parliament House, one the Speaker's Green and one at the Premier's Hall, largely due to your efforts. Thank you for that, uh, Evan. Good afternoon. I'm Wendy Fox. I've always loved hearing stories, and my grandpa told them best. He'd tell me of pirate adventures in search of a treasure chest. But then something weird happened out of the blue one day. He couldn't tell me stories because his words had gone away. They told me he had aphasia. It's a funny word, but not a choke. My grandpa got aphasia because of something called a stroke. You see, blood flows through little vessels like water through a drain. But if that blood flow stops, you can get damage to your brain. I can show you what it looks like. Here Grandpa's scan is on the right. You can see the difference. His brain is dark at the damaged site. So we know about a stroke and how areas of the brain can die. Now listen to Grandpa. He makes mistakes no matter how hard he tries. No, I can't say. Sword. Break? No. Elfin? Beacon? No, no, it is too. I know that one, that's easy. Car? Car? Yeah, no, I can't say. Because it's so hard for him to name people, objects and birds, I set off on a treasure hunt to find what happened to his words. I imagine I was a pirate and the captain of a great big boat, searching for what had become of the stories I loved most. To find out what was wrong with Grandpa's words and make him proud, I had to understand how we get from just the thought to speaking out loud. Luckily I had a map to follow and I could learn things along the way. So what happens from thought to talk? Something we all do every day. When we see a picture of a parrot and look at it with our eyes, this activates the brain at the back of the head. Now that's a surprise. From there we process features like its beak and brightly feathered rear. All this information becomes active at about the level of your left ear. Nearby in the brain we find parrot 
the sounds that make the word. Then that passes to another section and we can finally name the bird. So I've learned that just to say one word, in the brain there's many stages, and for Grandpa one stage is broken, like a book that's missing pages. For now the hunt is over, and although my journey has been long, I've learned about stroke, aphasia, and the things that can go wrong. The treasure that I have found is in diamonds, pearls or gold. It's the story of Grandpa's aphasia, and I'll make sure that it gets told. Congratulations uh, to, to everybody who's made the past 10 years uh, such a success and uh, also look forward to the next 10 and more years and um, in my role as the Assistant Minister, assisting the Honourable Lawrence Springborg and probably the Newman team, um, I hope I don't change at all by becoming a politician. I hope that I remain as passionate about patients um, as the reason that actually got me in there and uh, working and uh, I won't delay matters further because I know I'm the only impediment between the main course and yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I am very mindful 
of uh, when senior nurse who came to see me in my previous role relatively recently as a patient because her memory wasn't so good. And uh, after we'd been chatting for a little while, she completely forgot that she was there as a patient whose memory wasn't so good. And as she left, she said, the doctor, she said, if there's anything I can do to help you, please don't hesitate to ask. And she said, and if I can't help you, we'll get matron involved. And my word, she can move mountains. <laughs> so I think that's what it's all about. It is about the, the faith, the energy, the enthusiasm, the ability to move mountains uh, that makes a difference. And so I wish the AAA every ongoing success in moving all the mountains that may be there, climbing them all, and actually making progress. So thank you again for the and congratulations. And we thought that this time, after having seen the official part of the program, some of the slide presentations and speaking from uh, Sydney and Melbourne, etc., that there are people in the audience here today who may like to say a few words about their experience with the AAA. I think there are so many of us here that can look at every table and see somebody that has encompassed our lives and become such firm friends in our lives since we have, um, since 2003 in our particular situation when Ron had his stroke. So it is just, it is just wonderful, the warmth that comes from so many people and uh, I know I am pretty frustrating at times when I have to ask them over and over and over again, what did you say? But at least I can speak. So that is, um, that is um, a plus that so many of the others here don't have today. But it is just lovely having you all in our lives in some manner. Good about the fate of my sister took me from, she came over from New Zealand when they were having the conference in North Brisbane and she took me and she took Mark. That's how Mark started and it was very funny. Um, the Kiwi Judith that doesn't know around Brisbane driving, um, just as well Mark's got great Hands. <laughs> so so he, it was really funny. Oh, I could talk a lot of crap and Mark couldn't talk at all. <laughs> In the end, now our whole family does directions just with, on the hands with through Mark. So I'd just like to say on behalf of all the carers, um, wonderful to be a part of an organisation like this and to get such support from each other. I think when we go to our respective homes, sometimes we get a bit bogged down with just everyday life and our troubles and worries and we tend to forget the good times and forget the good, the good support that we do get. And I'd like to really thank um, the University of Queensland and all the speeches and the organisation just for starting because it's helped um, not only the, um, the actual people with aphasia but the carers just to survive in this um, world of um, unknown speech and unknown gestures and just what's going to go on from day to day. So my, I just want to say thank you very, very much for all the support through the years, guys, and keep those um, sessions coming for our guys so they can get out there and, and learn a bit more. Thank you. I guess the AAA for me, um, when I came out of the hospital, I knew nothing about aphasia. I didn't know that it was an association. I thought that I was the only person like, like I was. Um, and when I found out that there were people like me, um, it was, um, it was comforting and when I rang um, and with the help of my mum um, to find out that there was an association if I could help in any way they were like wow somebody wants to help us and I thought it was this huge association and, and I think there was like um, 12 people and at that stage or, or 15 members and 
there were about three people doing everything. And um, as you come to the, um, the, I think it was the Melbourne conference, and I came and I listened to um, other people speak. And I thought, I could do that. I could speak in front of an audience. And I listened to other people's stories and I thought I could do what other people did. <laughs> um, so look, thank you very much to Linda for your contribution today and Simon to yours as well. Uh, Dr Chris Davis, so we do appreciate your attendance here today and uh, look forward to your involvement in our association in years to come. Expecting the 